He was an old school mafioso. He extorted, tortured, and killed his adversaries without mercy. In the Little Italy section of Manhattan, he was known by the name Lupo the Wolf. Carl Syphakis notes, while it would be useless to name any particular mafioso in America as the most fearsome of all, he would certainly rank as a contender. Some noted that his given name was Ignatius Sayeta. His gravestone just has the name Ignatius Lupo. An admission summary for the Atlanta Penitentiary has the same name and makes this note, quote, while the true last name is Sayeta, the family goes by the name of Lupo, unquote. Truthfully, it makes little difference at this point. As ferocious as his namesake, Lupo the Wolf was a terrorist long before the word became fashionable. Through violence, bombings, black hand letters, murder, he extorted everyone and everything. Related by marriage to Giuseppe Morello, Lupo became head of the Harlem-based Morello crime family. He was born, although reports vary, in either Corleone, Sicily, or Palermo on March 19, 1877. Lupo fell into crime at an early age and committed his first murder in 1899. With authorities hot on his trail, he fled Sicily, coming to the United States and settling in Brooklyn. Taken from a scene from The Godfather 2, Lupo was a grocery store operator at 9 Prince Street, where he sold olive oil, cheese, and wine, and from there his fortunes grew. Lupo was only 25 years old and in control of two stores and a bar, but he wasn't satisfied. His next move was to prey on Italian immigrants in what is known as Little Italy. There, Lupo used black hand tactics from Italy to extort from the weak and join forces with his fellow Italian gangsters Giuseppe and Nicholas Morello and their half-brothers Vincenzo, Nicholas, and Ciro Terranova. Lupo was an expert at deception. He would plan a murder and convince his intended victim that nothing was wrong. When his prey was at ease, he would pull out an ice pick, jamming it into the base of their skulls. Such was the case involving Giuseppe Catania. Lupo was one of the last men seen with Catania before his bloody, mutilated corpse was found in July 1902. The pair had traveled together to Manhattan in what Catania thought was a trip to a grocery warehouse to get some grocery stock out of bond from the importer's office. But Catania was never heard from again, and the police never gained enough evidence to warrant any arrest in the case. During this period, Lupo was becoming heavily involved in counterfeiting U.S. currency. Together with the Morello brothers, they operated a large counterfeiting ring. In 1903, Lupo married 23-year-old Salvatrice Terranova, and by this, the Morello-Terranova-Lupo connection was born and solidified, which strengthened the crime alliance. With the Morellos and Terranovas backing his rackets, Lupo became even more brazen and vicious. It was rumored that Lupo owned a property in Harlem that became known as the Murder Stables. In these horrific stables, Numerous rivals were said to have been tortured and killed. Much of this appears to be gang legend, although it is believed that there could have been one such stable that Lupo did own. The belief that Lupo had a murder stable, whether true or not, helped garner him a fearful reputation and allowed his black hand extortion ring to flourish. It is believed that Lupo was responsible for up to 60 black hand executions. Although the Black Hand was not a formal organization, many do consider it a forerunner to the American Mafia. But Lupo refined the techniques of the Black Hand method, becoming skilled in, and as one writer noted, promoting himself into every embodiment of evil in the Italian community. His reputation for showing no mercy and killing with the light was such that he became so fearsome that it was common for Italian immigrants to make the sign of the cross at the mere mention of his name, hoping that it would ward off the evil. In 1903, the barrel murder case began after a body was found in East 111th Street. On Thursday, the 16th of April, 1903, Lubo was arrested in connection with the killing. His apartment was forcibly entered whilst he was asleep. Pretending to be ill, 
They called for a physician from the Roosevelt Hospital to check him out. He was deemed fit and taken into custody. In his apartment, they found a dagger and three revolvers, but Lupo was eventually cleared due to lack of evidence. But the police were convinced that he was guilty. They were able to arrest him again that same month on counterfeiting charges. Lupo spent the next few months in jail and local residents hoped he would rot in his cell. The charge dated back to September 1902 when Lupo had mailed a letter to Salvatore Maltese in Canada. The letter was found to contain a single $5 counterfeit note, but again the charges were dropped. But the police kept coming after him. Reports state that local residents would quietly slip police notes informing them of Lupo's activities. Just six months after his release on the counterfeiting charges, Lupo was arrested again for carrying a concealed weapon. He paid a fine and was again released to prey on his countrymen. Over the next few years and decades, the crime scene of New York and across the country started to change, especially as a result of Prohibition in 1919. Lupo and his methods were becoming outdated. Bootleggers, beer barons, the emerging national crime syndicate, and the mafia saw the Black Hand as too risky an enterprise and not good for business, and as a result, Lupo was out. In 1936, the governor petitioned President Roosevelt to have Lupo return to Atlanta Federal Penitentiary to finish his sentence for his involvement in racketeering. When he returned, his power was gone, and he died a few years later. <laughs>